Welcome to this episode of Sykes Now Learning Hub, Introduction to LCMS Series. In this episode, we will talk about reversed phase chromatography. Remember, the goal of the LC separation process is to separate the analytes of interest as well as you can. Depending on the molecular properties of the analytes you want to separate, you will need to choose from several basic options for setting up your analytical method. Before we get to the topic of today's episode, the reversed phase chromatography, let's briefly see what the function of the stationary and the mobile phases are. The stationary phase consists of spherical particles that are densely packed in the column. The surface of the particles is typically modified with various functional ligands with the aim to further specify the selectivity. These are just some examples of a huge variety from which you can choose. The different materials are designed in such a way that you can select between different separation modes. Here, you can get an overview of which separation method is best suited for which type of molecules. In this video, we will focus on the separation mode that is called reversed phase. Which mobile phase is most suitable depends on which separation mode you want to apply and consequently also on which stationary phase you have chosen. However, it must also match the molecular properties of the analytes. Remember that at the beginning of the analysis, the mobile phase must allow the analytes to be retained by the stationary phase, but also have sufficient dilution power to eventually remove the analytes from the column. In most cases, a gradient dilution mode is required to achieve this balance. We will discuss an example using the reversed phase chromatography separation mode in a moment. The polarity of the analytes is the molecular property that determines their behavior in reversed phase chromatography. Before we go into this separation process, let's first refresh some of the terminology needed to explain it. The polarity of a compound is determined by the functional groups of the molecule. Some compounds are hydrophobic, which means they are water-fearing. They have a non-polar character and are therefore poorly soluble in water, but soluble in organic solvents. Other compounds are attracted to water and are therefore called hydrophilic. They have a polar or ionic character and are more soluble in water than in organic solvents. Then there are compounds that are amphiphilic, that is they have both polar and non-polar properties. Reversed phase chromatography is a frequently used separation method in liquid chromatography. It can be used to separate moderately polar to non-polar analytes. Let's take a look at what happens when we apply reversed phase chromatography to separate eight different nitrosamines. This is the resulting chromatogram when this method was used. A gradient was applied in which the mobile phase was more aqueous in the beginning, and it contained more organic solvent towards the end. C18 refers to the stationary phase and means that the surface of its particles is modified with functional ligands consisting of a hydrocarbon chain of 18 carbon atoms. This makes the particle surface nonpolar and other nonpolar molecules are attracted to it. C18 columns are a classic version of stationary phases used in reversed phase chromatography. Let's look at just the first and last analytes eluting from the column to see how reversed phase chromatography works. These are the molecules NDMA and NDBA. They have the same hydrophilic head group, but the nonpolar or hydrophobic parts of the molecules differ in size. This means that NDMA is the more polar molecule compared to the more nonpolar NDBA. What happens when they are injected onto the column? Remember, the mobile phase is more aqueous in the beginning. Both molecules have a higher affinity to the stationary phase, that is they interact with their non-polar part to the C18 hydrocarbon chains at the surface of the particles. Now the mobile phase gradually becomes less polar as the methanol content is slowly increased. The interaction of the NDMA molecule with the stationary phase is disrupted, as it now has a greater affinity to the mobile phase. It finally is eluted from the column, while the more non-polar analyte NDBA still rather interacts with the stationary phase. As the methanol content of the mobile phase continues to increase, the strong interaction of NDBA is also interrupted and it is finally eluted. 
In summary, in reversed phase the most polar analyte is eluted first, that is it has the least retention. The most non-polar analyte is eluted last as it has the highest affinity to the stationary phase. It is best retained. When a gradient elution is applied, it starts with a more aqueous composition of the mobile phase. The content of non-polar organic solvents in the mobile phase is gradually increased over the time course of the LC process. Thank you for watching this episode. To view the full training course, including progress checks and a final quiz to earn a certificate, go to sciex.com. Log in today to take advantage of the highly rated training material offered in the Sciex Now Learning Hub. You can use the links below.